look at this absolutely an advertisement which touches the heart of people and how did they do that if you look into this advertisement a little more closely he goes across whoever had conceived this advertisement he grow, goes across the borders crosses all the borders various cultures right from punjab then gujarat then your tamil nadu your kerala your bangalore uh, so your uh, um, uh, karnataka andhra covers the entire spectrum of audience and there cannot be anything more emotional than the daughter of the house getting married and going to a different household one of the most emotional uh, uh, aspects of anybody's life and they have leveraged very well in shooting this all one minute uh, video and that is how they have used in fact if you look at this advertisement it is also a means of persuasion and all rules of persuasions that we have discussed so far they have all been put into use in this small video the ethos part of it there's nothing um, you know Ill uh, illegal or derogatory here anything there's not, no content in this uh, particular uh, video that offends the sentiments of uh, uh, anybody so that way the ethos part of it is taken care of very well and the second we are talking about the logos part of it the facts and figures if you remember there was one specific scene in which there was that purity meter in which they tested and said it's 19.9% perfect or something so here there is some element of uh, logos also in this facts and figures as to why you should buy that they talk about the trust thousands of customers have established on that particular brand and that was uh, the uh, logos part of it and of course the pathos this pathos and pathos nothing else uh, across the country you know the languages can differ your cultures can differ subcultures can differ but the basic traits the basic emotions between a father and a daughter of the house leaving the house is something very very precious and this concept has been captured very well by the person who conceived this advertisement it takes into account all the rules of persuasion of course any advertisement is something to persuade you to buy a product and that's what it means we must say we must agree that they have done it quite well now uh, we will look at uh, the science part of it there are certain very very important structure there is a structure to the whole uh, persuasion game which starts with reciprocity reciprocity is extremely important reciprocity is give and take okay okay before we discuss those uh, uh, masalas we will try to look at some key factors okay for any persuasion exercise for any persuasion task to achieve its goal three things need to be kept in mind the first is the right intentions the parties on both sides should have the right intentions that's the um, what do you call that that's uh, the sign qua non i don't know how to pronounce that sign qua non of any persuasion exercise second is it has to be a win win if anybody wants to win at the cost of other those persuasions generally will not have a good uh, uh, percentage of winning and then of course ethical considerations we've discussed a lot about it as long as these three factors are kept in mind then the probability of success in any persuasion is very very high so we looked at some important points we have some seven important steps which I, i would like to take you very briefly the first is the reciprocity reciprocity is nothing but as human beings all of us are obliged to give back to others what we receive okay a big research was conducted in the united states why on uh, you know on the subject of why people give tips to servers why do you give tip to a waiter because a waiter comes to you and provides you some soft or something like that he provides you some chocolate or a pint we are obligated to some, to give something back to them okay so that is a reciprocity so in any persuasion exercise if you want to succeed first you have to give in order to receive that's extremely important don't try to win all the wars yourselves you may have to lose little bit of battles here and there in order to win the war now when i give a comparison about wars and uh, battles don't take it as a manipulation technique it is not i'm only talking about persuasions keeping the ethical things in mind i'm only talking about that all said and done we need to first give to receive for example you cannot win a big prize without betting 
and betting involves money. So before getting a big sum, you have to first give a small sum, whether it is a lottery ticket, whether it is a gambling casino, everywhere you have to first give in order to receive. Reciprocity, a very, very important aspect of any persuasion exercise. The second is scarcity. Whenever you talk about scarcity, people will not realize the importance of things as long as they have it with them. People never realize that. But when the scarcity is created, that is when people feel the importance of it. And let me also give you a domestic example. Many of us take our wives for granted. Many of us, frankly speaking, we take our respective wives for granted. But when they move out to their native place or whatever, for a long time, that is when you really feel their absence, right? So scarcity is one of the very important parts in a persuasion. Now you might wonder, what has scarcity got to do with persuasion? We're going to talk about it. There was a case study of British Airways. There was a flight between London and Heathrow, uh, between these two destinations. But somewhere the seats were not getting fulfilled. The airport company, the airline company, the British Airways, in this case, they were not making profits at all. They wanted to shut down this, but they just start group of experts, strategists, I don't know what, they just planned that, okay, we will announce that and let's see the feedback from people and based on that, let's take a final call. But when they announced that they will be shutting down the flights, then once again, you found they found that the all the flights started becoming full. What was the reason? This was one of the very important flights between Heathrow and New York, very convenient flight. But when this kind of a scarcity was created, then what happened? Automatically, the traffic grew. How it grew, all that is a different story. But this was an established case study on scarcity. So scarcity, creating scarcity is also one method of persuasion. You might have also, for example, to substantiate this example, you might have seen a lot of advertisements which says, offer available one little stocks last. Obviously, they are considering this, using this particular tool to persuade you to buy it fast, okay? Then comes the authority. Very, very important. People follow the what is told by experts. So, people get persuaded if it is an expert who is saying that. For example, if you are a stock market expert, who people will believe? How do they know that you are a stock market? So, therefore, most of the stock market experts, what they do is they come on televisions, they put up video lessons, for example, they try to, you know, give you a, a, a feeling that they are experts in the subject, in the manner they take up topics, they will give you examples, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Even this training program, which I am doing to you, this is also there is a persuasion, there is an advertisement motive in this, because we run our own training programs, which run for three days and four days and uh, Hindustan uh, Petroleum is our customer, con country no cooperation, Times of India, um, you know, Maruti Udyog, Renault, et cetera, et cetera. How do we advertise? Because the we encourage the trainers to come on YouTube, give this kind of training so that it gives confidence to the other company. Rather than interviewing the trainer for 15 minutes and half an hour, how do you do the training program? What is the methodology you uh, adopt? Uh, what do you do to engage your participants? What is it you do to make your training programs interesting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This one video for 15 minutes conveys it all. Okay, so authority is one very important thing. So the second example we can take is if it is an MBBS doctor, they charge you 500 rupees. But if it is an MD doctor, you're willing to give them 1,000 rupees. Why? Is it because the MD doctor is a better doctor than an MBBS doctor? Maybe, may not be. One cannot be very sure of it. But that authority. Um, you know, uh, makes a lot of difference as far as persuasion is concerned, okay? These degrees, diplomas, they make a lot of difference. I can personally tell you, I, I'm a doctor. Uh, I have a PhD degree from Birla Institute of Technology. That makes a lot of difference. There are lots and lots of trainers who are much better than me. But when I show my degree to them, my title, a PhD in consumer behavior, that too from one of the top ranking business institutions uh, in the country, uh, Birla Institute of Technology, then of course it adds a lot of weight. So in persuasion, authority also sometimes uh, helps a lot to you. Then comes consistency. Everybody wants consistency. To put it in short, the detective of uh, influence looks for voluntary, active and public commitment. Consistency is extremely re required. In short, consistency is nothing but walking the talk. You say something, you should do that. 
that's consistency. For example, we'll take the example of a department manager persuading his subordinates to come to office on time. He should be consistent enough in coming to the office on time, on a day on day basis. Otherwise, he will not be effective in persuading others to do that. If somebody says, please wear your masks, he should be the one who should be wearing mask all the time in his office. He cannot be very lax about it and come out and explain to people <laughs> the virtues of wearing mask. We have seen a lot of people like that. Okay, So consistency is extremely important for persuasion.